All right, mates. Uh, we had a, a, obviously a, a big week with the four games and a lot of brilliant performances. None better judged by the MLR this week to be John Poland from the New England Free Jacks. Uh, the scrum half had a big game against San Diego Legion. So let's bring him on in right now. Um, yeah, so I guess started out in school in um, Perez and Cork. Um, played all the ways up through school. Uh, played Munster, underage, Irish underage. Um, and then graduated. Um, started in college in UCC. Um, studying a finance degree and um, went into the Munster Academy for a year. Um, it was a bit of... I, <laughs> It was a bit of a rocky road um, early on. With um, I didn't get picked for the Junior World Cup. I played in the Irish and 26 Nations and then uh, got dropped for the uh, Junior World Cup, which is pretty good. Um, but kind of taught me early on to be resilient and uh, have a bit of self-confidence or whatever. So basically after that, went back into pre-season with Munster. Um, Anthony Foley, the coach at the time, gave me a call and asked me to come back in. So. Um, that was a good way to just get back on the horse and get back into it um, and then got an academy contract off the back of that then played a year in the cat played two years in the academy um, and then got a training contact track from months or third year and then basically just um, finished up a monster was finishing my degree and still had a bit of college to do and I wasn't too keen I was keen to just finish it and get it done with um, but at that point, I was kind of looking around, there was a few championship club offers and stuff, but I wasn't too keen to go there without a college degree, um, without having finished it. So yeah, then out of the blue, I was studying for my final exams and Conor Kindrigan texted me just asking me when I was done, when I'd be done um, my final exams of college. So that was basically the first message, just, uh, just before one of my exams completely threw me off track trying to study in the library, asking me would I be interested in coming out to the States. Um, so yeah, I managed to pass that exam and then a few months later I was out here um, with the Free Jacks. Yeah, so when I first got the plane, yeah, it was, it was freezing. It was like minus 20 degrees or something. I, was, I remember walking down a uh, street with Josh Larson. They had just come over and he, me and him were going to a Bruins game. I remember walking down the street and the wind was coming towards us and we had to walk down the street backwards because our faces were just <laughs> literally sore from the wind. It was that cold. Um, so yeah, that was definitely a new experience. But seeing all the snow and stuff was quite nice. I suppose back home, we're not used to seeing that much snow, more, more so just rain and sleet. Um, so it was pretty picturesque. And then training indoors helps definitely. I think we were training in a bubble, so it was never that cold. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty different setup to monster when I came over I suppose it was just a bit like a bit less intense um, it was still like definitely a step up from club rugby but um, there was a real mixture of players like you had some unbelievable players then you had some guys who were just fresh new to rugby or like still learning a lot about the game and only picked it up a few years ago but there were so many guys with loads of potential and talent that it was a real cool balance to kind of like have these guys that like I suppose people even like Jackson Thieves or a second row a guy who's playing class again this year but like someone who's pretty new to rugby but like has so much potential to be unbelievable and just so keen to learn and get better and I suppose um, they're real positive and it's just a different environment I feel like you can feel like I can add a bit more here because help guys uh, get a bit better and also challenge myself against these guys who are coming over from overseas and our serious talents as well. Going into it, I think um, we knew they were kind of, um, had been on the road a bit, had been kind of um, hit by a lot of injuries and stuff. So we knew they were probably a good time to play them because a lot of the time they have a serious team and serious depth, but I think they were a bit tame this weekend. Um, so it was a good time to play them, um, chatting to Ben and stuff. And I think just tactically we saw that um, they kind of um, they play pretty deep off the edge and stuff with their 10 um, I think when Cecil Africa went into 10 it kind of showed he was playing, they are playing pretty deep so we thought we could get a bit of line speed on them and try refresh them with our defence this weekend and um, I think we kind of did do that um, we kind of cut them down at source and tried not to let them get into their shape too much and just 
after two passes, we were trying to hoping to get up and hit man and ball. Um, and then in attack, we were just trying to. We knew they kind of played um, with two guys in the backfield, so trying to move the ball to width, and then. We didn't actually do it in the game, but we knew that they close late, so we kind of look at the kick space in behind, um, mm. with little um, grubber kicks in behind and stuff. We did it once or twice, but um, we were just looking to shift the ball a bit. But mainly, we were kind of focused on ourselves. Um, we have known for a couple of years that the line out has been a, an important source of possession when it comes to scoring tries. I mean, when hookers like Dylan Fawcett are leading the league in try scoring you know it's going to be for the lineout. But I think in particular, this year seems to be um, a, a uh, um, uh, an opportunity. So even if you, so, you know, just overall on average, right? About half the tries in MLR come from lineouts. Mm -hmm. And you would say, okay, well, let's, you know, that's, you know, th there's got to be some teams that are sort of boring, right? That can't score, that score from lineouts. But you know who leads that, Dan? Ooh. All right, so the leading team in lineouts is the Free Jacks. 73% of their penalties come from the Free Jacks, come from the lineouts. Second place, the Giltinis. 58% uh -huh. of their tries come from lineouts. So, so to me, well, I saw that and I was like, okay, what's going on here? Right, you've got a team that can score from anywhere. What's going on? And there's a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy that happens when you start using stats. Stats is a big part of the game in rugby. People look at them and they're like, hey, how am I supposed to score? And they say, hey, I'm supposed to score from lineouts. Therefore, whenever there's a penalty, right? You can see it all the time. People are not taking the points. All right, let's do the pickums. Houston, at Nola, what are you thinking here? Well, I, I think Nola's gonna win, but should I pick Houston? Well, it's up to you. This is why you go first. I mean, Houston, Houston got a buy, right? Nola came off a big win. Um, Houston been playing some good stuff. Um, it's at it's at Nola. Nola are on this big like homestand, right? Before they go on that, like they've got a lot of road trips coming up. Um, Houston should be fresh. They've been playing good stuff. Um, you know, Nola haven't played their best. It was a gutsy win, but I don't think they played their best. They've obviously. They've got lots of injuries at 10. Rob, losing Robbie Coleman's really, really hurt them. Um, let, let alone Nick Feeks, JP Eloff. I mean, it's like they've, they've really, really got some problems here. Um, you know, Nate Osborne's coaching his butt off and, and pulling out games when he can. My instinct says Nola, but, you know, um, I, Houston have a shot. So I think I think I, I would say this is going to be Nola. It's going to be, um, you know, 24 22 Nola, but I could go the other way. Yeah, I'm going Houston. So there you go. You found oh, one. There's a game you can pull back. There's a game I can pull back. Yeah, I, got, I just got some inside mail. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but... Uh, yeah, that's how it goes. Sabercats, rock solid this week. It's, uh, you know, lock it in. Lock it in. All right, next one up is Austin at New England. What do you think of this one? This is going to be an interesting game. Like, Austin's one of these really tough, tough teams. Um, like, I don't, I don't think they've played that well. They've got a very good defense. Um, they're really, really scrappy. They've got a you know, good set piece. Um, but they're at New England. New England have a good good home. I, I, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the, with the Gilgronies here, the AGs. I'm going to go with the AGs. How dare you? Now? Yeah, yeah. What are you going to go with? Austin. Always Austin. Always Austin. Always Am Austin. I they're my Wesley Snipes. I'm always going for Austin. Always bet on Wesley Snipes. In any movie he's in, except The Expendables. I think he lost in that one. But the Blade series, he always wins. So bet on Wesley Snipes. All right. Uh, ATL at Toronto. At home. At ATL. At ATL. Uh, Toronto. I'll go first. Toronto. I think Toronto is going to um, I, 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 This is one of my... I'm really looking forward to this game. I think it's yeah, going to be a good game. Yeah, me too. I think I think like both teams, like neither teams are traveling. There'll be some familiarity. You, you know, I think I think it's going to be really good. Um, you can go with Toronto. Um, you know, I think Toronto should bounce back, but you know, you don't know. You know, they they've been pretty inconsistent. Um, ATL are going to come in fresh. I'm, I'm going to go with ATL. I just wonder how the week's going to be at training there, where it's like. So I was just saying, Toronto, they're at home, should make rugby ATL use your way locker room. 
You're like, oh, you're the away team. Walk across there. Go hey, use hey, uh, the cold fire damp and one. ice cup. Fire yeah. and ice cup. Yes, it's the Targaryens versus uh, the Starks. 